Hello, welcome to the weather update. It's 10 o'clock on the 28th of March. However, it feels more like the 28th of January. Uh, and you can see all this lake effect and a lot of instability in the air. And uh, uh, although we had a decent amount of clouds around today, the clouds were pretty, actually, very pretty. Uh, so uh, we had a lot of these uh, stratocumulus clouds with Virgo around. Uh, I did actually wind up checking it out and going actually to the pines for a little bit and checking it out there because uh, it was pretty amazing. Uh, looking at, I'll show you some of the pictures here. Uh, there are some from the pines. Uh, and you can see these just beautiful clouds. And there was some blue sky at times shining through right there. But you can see the Virga. All that is Virga. That's snow that's not reaching the ground because the air is very dry. So uh, we had a couple of flurries here and there. This was later at Babylon, at Argyle Lake. Look at that really interesting cloud formation right there. Uh, <laughs> uh, really interesting cloud formations. Uh, here's some more. Uh, just really beautiful if you got a chance to look at the sky today uh, this is what you get when you have a uh, arctic air mass in place with a polar vortex uh it's absolutely stunning uh and that's exactly what we're seeing here uh absolutely just uh really cool looking skies across the area today uh and just lots of these snow showers popping up but a lot of them just weren't reaching the ground due to the dry air uh so looking at the modus satellite you could see all the clouds we had like popcorn clouds uh, across our area all that's from instability uh, a lot of it's coming in off the lakes because the lakes are still warmer than the, the lakes used to freeze over but because especially when it's a mild winter the lakes don't freeze over so you get the arctic air picks up a little bit of moisture from the lakes uh, and you get these interesting cloud formations if you look to the north of the lakes it looks fairly clear um, and probably very cold up in this area of canada probably around hudson bay probably below zero see there was some clear spots there in southeastern New England. Uh, we did set a new record today. So uh, uh, record low maximum highs for the day. So let's look at this on Twitter here. Uh, record low maximum highs were set today. All right. So uh, for once, we actually broke a cold record. All right. Central Park, 33. That's all it hit today. That broke the record for the day of 34. That was set back in 1893. LaGuardia, only 32. That broke the record of 36, set in 1966. Kennedy, 34. That broke the record of 37 in 1959. Newark, 35, tied with its record of, in, of 35 in 1937. Islip, 33. That record was set in, in 1966 uh, of 35, so we broke that. Bridgeport, 32 for a high. Broke the 35-degree high. Uh, with a record that, that was a record set in 1966. So these a lot of all-time records fell uh, today, and it'll be interesting. Actually, what I want to do is look at the climatology and see where our record lows are, uh, because uh, we may be dealing with breaking a record low, perhaps not. But let's go ahead and look and see if we do actually see what the record low is for the day. Uh, the low is 18. So this was uh, this was tonight. So we may actually set that. I don't know what the record is for tomorrow, but we may actually break that uh, record low. So more records might fall by the morning. Uh, with this rather historic cold, uh, for once we are having historic cold instead of historic heat. And uh, 25 degrees right now at Islip. Uh, that's all it is. 25 degrees, dew point one, northwest wind to 20, gusting to 30. Uh, so we still got those blustery conditions out there. Uh, and you can see the temperatures throughout the day. Uh, look at that. Only in the only we really barely hit freezing today. All right, we're mainly below freezing today. Uh, and you can see here, for the most part, plenty of clouds around uh, throughout the day here. Looking at all these observations here, uh, plenty of clouds. It was clear in the morning before 10 o'clock. We did have mostly clear skies, and the clouds quickly built in. And there, and some areas had some snow showers, and they were actually. Snow school warnings issued, warnings issued for New Jersey, believe it or not. So West Hampton right now, it's 24 degrees, dew point zero. Not going to see any radiational cooling tonight with that wind. And we still got some pretty strong wind gusts. Look at this, a 44-mile-an-hour wind gust reported in downtown Manhattan. A 35-mile-an-hour wind gust reported at Kings Point. Uh, so we're still dealing with these winds. Looking at Jersey, it's just as cold there. 26 in Tom's River. Uh, so very, very cold there. And let's see. How they did at Lakehurst today. Let's see if there were 
what they were today. I don't know if they broke any records, so let's see what their high was today. Well, it was warmer there. It looks like it got up to 36 degrees. Is that no? That's no. 35 degrees was the high today at Lakehurst. So a little bit warmer there in, in Jersey. A little bit warmer. Um, a little bit warmer. Um, and that hissing sound here. Now I got steam coming out of the radiator. So can't win. At least it's not banging as much. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, and those dew points are pretty damn low, too, as well. Uh, we can go to the Philadelphia office and see if any record minimums were set over there. Let's see if they set any record minimums. Yep, they sure did. So let's go to their record minimum uh, situation here. Exceptionally cold day across the region. Multiple record coldest high temperatures. So it looks like Allentown, Reading, Wilmington, uh, Atlantic City broke its record. It was 39. New one was 38, um, Mount Pocono, 21, Georgetown. Most of these are Trenton. That They broke their uh, record minimum high, uh, was, 30, was 35, but the new one is 32. Uh, so, yeah, we really, this record's falling all over. This is, like I said, historic cold weather that we're having. Uh, it is historic cold weather for, this is the actual poll of Vortex finally decided to come down at the end of March what we should have been dealing with in January and February comes now. <laughs> um, but, it, you know, this is, uh, uh, at least we're getting something out of it, you know. So let me go back to the weather um, map so you can see here some of these temperatures. We'll go, we're going to go a little further north. I'm curious how cold it is up in, like, Albany and stuff. So it's 19 degrees in Albany. Uh, let's go up here even further up into Canada here. We got temperatures in the teens. Uh, looks like Montreal. 18 degrees, so yeah, it's just up some pretty cold air uh, here, definitely, and it's just very interesting to see, uh, and this is all courtesy of this high pressure system, and this low, and this flow coming out from the northwest, that high moves closer to us tomorrow, builds over us, we're still going to have a little bit of a gradient, so it's still going to be breezy, but we should have more sunshine, um, but it's still going to be cold, um, and that high eventually moves offshore Wednesday, and you can see a warm front approaches Wednesday evening. Could bring a slight chance of a shower. And then we have uh, a surge of warm air on Thursday with a strong cold front that we're going to have to watch out for because this could bring another chance of some possible severe weather. And then Friday, we're back in the cool weather again. Uh, cooler, Not as cool as what we're dealing with, but more seasonable for this time of the year. Uh, so if we do look at the... H triple R model, which we have the zero Z H triple R model. Uh, we can look at that. You'll see uh, our threat for precipitation is pretty much done. We'll be dry tomorrow. Uh, it is Wednesday that we'll have to watch out for the chance of a light shower in the afternoon. Perhaps seems like it evaporates with this warm front coming in. All right. Uh, but beyond that, um, we have this cold front. So if we look at the GFS here, uh, you'll see this cold front for Thursday and. You have to watch because you can notice there's a little bit of a V to the isobars there. So we'll have a better idea as we get uh, closer to that time period. Uh, I'm not going to really speak about it too much now. It's all about the cold right now. And boy, this is the cold air we have settled in. So JHRRR has us going down. We could be breaking some record lows tonight. Could see some teens in uh, some of our areas. Lows are in the teens to around 20. It's going to be frigid when you get up in Tuesday morning still with that wind and then Tuesday, we do get above freezing, but we're still going to be well below normal highs, only in the mid to upper 30s across the area. Uh, and then uh, we won't drop back as much tomorrow uh, Wednesday night because uh, the cold air advection will wane off, so lows will only be around the freezing mark, maybe a couple degrees below. And then uh, for Wednesday, it will be warmer with highs in the mid 40s. Uh, but you can see clearly that warm front uh, that approaches, and that warm front will be uh, bringing in much warmer air as we get into Thursday and more humid air too. So if we look at the dew points, let's show you the winds and the dew points and stuff. It's going tomorrow. You still see that northwest flow is the GFS, but still see the northwest flow is still in the dry air. Uh, but then as we get into Wednesday, the winds turn a little more west than southerly, and that brings in the moisture. Warm front comes through Thursday, last day of March. We're going to be very, very warm and somewhat humid too. And then behind that front, the drier air comes back in on Friday. So next thing we'll look at is the skies. Our gem for that. And tomorrow 
we'll have some sunshine, but we may still have some patchy clouds in the afternoon uh, with this instability around. Uh, you know, it's very cold air. You have a combination of this really cold air. Man, the sun in March is strong, and it just helps to promote this instability, even with the high pressure center there. Maybe more sunshine if you're in the southern part of New Jersey. I'm talking the southern part, like Atlantic City. Uh, but we'll see some clouds probably around. It probably won't be completely clear. Best skies will be early in the morning, and then in the afternoon we'll see some of those clouds. And maybe some more pretty Virga clouds again, like we saw today. Uh, and then at night it sort of clears off, and then the cirrus kind of rolls in, and then we're going to be dealing with some clouds on Wednesday. And then for Thursday, obviously, plenty more clouds. We can also look at the NAM model as well for that. Uh, and uh, we'll go to the 18Z for that. Um uh, this is the 18Z NAM, and you'll see NAM, not so much gunk hole on these clouds developing. It seems like it's more the RGEM uh, that's showing that, but it, it could definitely be an issue because uh, the GFS was showing it too, I believe. If we look at the GFS, you'll see. Uh, it's just the GFS for tomorrow, and you'll see some of it, a little more over Jersey. So there'll be some of it. It depends on how the wind trajectory sets up, and, you know, uh, again, the clouds are kind of pretty, though. I don't, I don't, I don't really mind them that much. It's better than the cirrus junk clouds that, you know, we normally deal with around these parts. Uh, but then after that, we'll be dealing with clouds Wednesday and Thursday. And maybe we, we can clear it out somewhat on Friday. But right now, it's just all about the cold. And uh, we're going to be dealing with this cold air mass for uh, a little while longer. Uh, it'll start to ease by tomorrow night. So for those who don't like it, yeah, it will ease. Uh, but uh, this is definitely, I, I like it because, hey, it's, it's some cold weather for change. And, you know. And, and I certainly do appreciate it, uh, considering all the warm weather we've had this winter. A uh, good cold snap at the end. One more Arctic air mass. One more polar vortex to enjoy. Uh, but the winds are out there. So if we look at the wind gusts here, we'll just use windy.com. You'll see we're still going to be dealing with some breezy conditions tomorrow as well. You still see it showing wind gusts up to 31 miles an hour. So it'll still be a little bit breezy. And let's see what this shows for clouds. Not that much, so... I think it'll be fairly decent. I think we'll have a decent amount of sunshine tomorrow, though. We might have a few clouds in the afternoon. It looks like it's generating them more over New Jersey, this model. So, uh, But anyway, get out there if you like this cold weather and enjoy it because then we have to suffer through a summer, a long, hot summer with lots of humidity. And we'll have to get through that before we can enjoy some cold weather again by next winter. And hopefully next winter will be colder than this one. That'll be it for this weather update. Take care and thank you for watching.